Rebecca, I, I ask that you watch the show with a pencil and paper every day. I ask that you take notes. I ask that you wake up another friend and bring them to the table so they can see what's going on. I want to ask you this one question. Does this concern you under the umbrella of freedom of speech? Fox is under attack because we're, we're just wrong thinking Americans. We're a danger and there's profit. Newspapers are about to be taken over because they're right thinking they're helpful, but they're out of money. So we should bail them out. Talk radio is under attack because they're wrong thinking they're a danger and they're profit. And they're not local anymore. Television tonight, I just told you, all this week. All this week, television is going to have service and volunteerism. They have green weeks and service weeks now on television, network television. Education. How about the mm 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 Barack Hussein Obama song? How about the story of stuff? They got it there. How about the NEA? <laughs> the NEA doing artwork to push the president and his agenda. And then you have the Internet. The last thing that's truly free, the government's about to get in on Thursday with net neutrality because... Too many people are driven by profit, and it's dangerous. Oh, the Internet is dangerous. We're back with Phil Kirpin, Policy Director for Americans for Prosperity, the chairman of the Internet Freedom Coalition. Okay, Phil, I see a pattern here. Is there any place that they don't have their fingers and they're about to grab on to the throat? Well, I think that what we have right now is an administration that's trying to centralize power in Washington over all aspects of our life. Unprecedented central economic planning for this country. And you can't do that unless you control the communication system. And that means all of it, Internet, television, radio. And that's exactly what they're trying to do with this. And that's the pattern. I think that the, the most disturbing thing is they're not just trying to manipulate it and control it through their skill the way they did on the campaign, but they're actually trying to do what they call structural reform that will lock in their control permanently. Okay. Mark Lloyd has said that he is, um, you know, he, he admires what Chavez did down in Venezuela. Um, who is, who is the architect of all of this? We're going to get into some of it over the next few days once I reveal what's underneath the giant big blue sheet. Um, but who is the architect? Would you say free press is um, maybe not the architect, but one of the big engines behind this? I would say that free press is the most powerful engine behind this. They've been at this for many, many years. And their founder, Robert McChesney, is an avowed socialist, a Marxist professor at the University of Illinois, formerly at the University of Wisconsin, bastions of Marxist thought. This is a man who two weeks after 9-11 said the United States is the leading terrorist institution in the world. This is a man who earlier this year in an article called A New New Deal advised President Obama that, quote, in the end there is no real answer but to remove brick by brick the capitalist system itself, rebuilding the entire society and socialist principles. Right. And this is a man who told a Canadian socialist website, quote, instead of waiting for the revolution to happen, we learned that unless you make significant changes in the media, it will be vastly more difficult to have a revolution. Okay. So they're the ones that are really going after all of this. And, and, and they're working with their friends in the White House. For instance, Susan Crawford, she's the White House Internet czar. You say you found, and we went to the Internet today to download it, and it's been scrubbed from YouTube. It's, what, what did you say you found? Yeah, it, it's interesting. There was, a, there was a keynote speech that Susan Crawford, who's on the National Economic Council, I think her official title is Special Assistant for Science, Technology, and Innovation Policy, basically the Internet czar. She's in charge of the Internet stimulus, in charge of a lot of these media policies. Uh, she came out in support of potential newspaper bailouts, and she had an incredible quote. She said, one of the happiest summers of my life was spent at the New York Times. They hired one cub lawyer for no particular reason, and I got to go to first page meetings and meet the guys in the basement who run the press. It was totally exciting. And every day I would walk toward the New York Times building and say, make me competent. I just want to be competent. So I have a lot of loyalty to news organizations, and I know President Obama does too. Yeah. I have a lot of loyalty to news organizations. I don't, I've worked for news organizations my whole life. I, I don't have any loyalty, really, to the news organizations. They're worried about them going out of business. Well, if they fail, somebody else will come about and do a better job. There's your loyalty. How about the loyalty to the truth, not to any one organization? This week, we will be talking about your right to speak out. All this week, back in a minute.